we're so happy you can join us for our challah baking with Safta Hetty this morning. Um, as everyone's coming in, it would be great if you could put in the chat, type in your favorite thing to bake. Um, this morning we're going to be baking challah, but baking is so much fun for everyone. So if you, anyone wants to share their favorite thing to bake. Erin loves baking cinnamon rolls. Ooh, that sounds good. I enjoy baking brownies. I, I'm a chocolate fan. Anyone else have anything they would like to share? Ooh, Ali and Josie say hala and hamantashen. That's a fun one. Uh, did everyone just make hamantashen for Purim? We did. We put lots of fun stuff in it. Oh, and Simon loves baking cookies and muffins. Yum. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Patty loves to bake everything. And that's why she's our special guest today. So again, I want to welcome all our PJ Library friends. Thank you so much for being here. And special thanks to Safta Hetty for teaching us her special hala recipe. And first, while everyone's getting ready, we're going to read a PJ story. And it's, of course, about hala. So this is called This is the Hala. And this is such a fun story. So maybe you can help me as we read. We can, we can practice making the hala. So this is the hala that Bubby makes. We're gonna say safta today. So this is the hala that safta makes. Does it look yummy? I think it looks delicious. This is the water and this is the sugar that went in the hala that safta makes. And she has helpers too, just like we have special helpers today too. This is the yeast that frothed the water that went in the hala that Safta makes. And she's pouring in, can everyone pour in? We're getting ready to bake so everyone can pour in. These are the eggs that whipped the yeast. We have to whip our eggs for this story. That went and that frothed the water, water that went in the hala that Safta made. This is the sugar that sweetened the eggs that whipped the yeast that frothed the water that went in the hala that Safta made. We're getting ready. It looks like it's getting messy. Does everyone have their PJ Library aprons? This is the oil that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, that went in the hala that Safta made. Look at that. Hopefully we won't get that messy. This is the flour that thickened the oil, that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, and that went in the challah that Safta made. That's like a tongue twister. These are the hands. Let's see everyone's hands. Is everyone going to help braid the hala? These are the hands that squish the flour. You guys squish, squish, squish. Ready? That thicken the oil, that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, and that went in the hala that Safta made. Now they're cleaning up. Ready? Now we're going to braid. These are the braids that were made by the hands that squished the flour, that 
thickened the oil that softened the sugar, that sweetened the egg, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, that went in the hala, that softer made. Oh, I see lots of breathing. This is the oven that baked the braids. Ooh, can you smell it now? Oh, it's gonna smell so delicious. That were made by the hands that squished the flour, that thickened the oil, that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, that went in the challah, that softer made. We're getting ready. This is the home that warmed by the oven, that baked the braids, that were made by the hands, that squished the flour, that thickened the oil, that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, that went in the challah, that softer made. Oh, we have a lot of work to do today. Ready, last one. This is the blessing that is set in the home, that is warmed by the oven, that, ba braid, uh, that baked the braids, that were made by the hands, that squished the flour, that thickened the oil, that softened the sugar, that sweetened the eggs, that whipped the yeast, that frothed the water, that went in the hala that we all made together, all of our PJ library friends and us. This is so exciting. And then this is a prayer that we're gonna say. Should we practice? I bet you lots of people know it. We can all practice together. So first we could say it in Hebrew. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaret. And I know there's a fun song my daughters like to sing when they have Hala too. Um, and here they are enjoying their Shabbat dinner with their special Hala that Safta made. And if you have this book, there's also a different recipe here. So again, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. Thank you all our PJ library friends for being here. We have some other fun upcoming events that I'll tell you about at the end. And I want to give a special welcome to Safta Hetty and her special helpers that she's going to introduce. Um, just to let you know, we are very honored to have Safta Hetty here. She has been a leader in the Jewish community and at Federation for many years. So we really appreciate you doing this and take it away, Safta Hetty. Oh, wait, one second. There you go. Hi, can everybody hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that nice introduction, Allie. And um, before we get any, any further, I want to introduce two of my helpers. I thought my third helper, our 10-month-old grandson, Mark, was going to be here, but I think this has gotten a little too close to his nap time. So uh, uh, he would have been limited in the things he could have done anyway. But um, if you two would introduce yourself, oldest one first. Um, my name is Ellie. And? And I am six and three quarters. And where do you go to school? What grade are you in? Um, where I go to school is Grove Schechter Day School, and I'm in first grade. Thank you. And what's your name? Josie Louise Amalgam. And how old are you? Three and three quarters. And, and what grade are you in, or what class are you in? What class? That, um, preschool, and the name of my class is Doggy. Okay, and what school are you going to? Things gross. <laughs> Go shop today, school. She's usually not very shy. Well, so you talked about um, that I've been a leader in the Jewish community for, for many years. For as long as that has been, I've been doing challah even longer. 
um, about 40 years ago, I believe my sister Marlene, who is on, uh, on the program with us today, along with my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, Aaron and Shirley, I'm thrilled that you're all here, as, long, as well as cousins from around the country. So thank you for joining us, along with all of you from Cleveland. Um, uh, I bought my first food processor and it came with something called a dough hook. And so I thought, if it has a dough hook, maybe it can make bread. And um, baking bread, baking challah was something that was always one of these these faraway goals because I remember my mother making challah and it took forever. And I'll talk about that in a little later as well. But I thought if I can do it in a food processor, so I found a recipe, I adapted it. That was 40 years ago and I've been making challah every week since. And sometimes even more often than that as we get into holidays. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So one of the first things that I want to do, though, is I want to thank Erin um, for being our Zoom master today. I appreciate it. And I wanted to thank a very special person who's here with us today. Iris November is with us. This is um, Mort at November and me from about, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. Mort, uh, unfortunately, passed away about almost six years ago. And every time I would visit Mort and Iris, I would bring a challah. And, of course, after I brought one the first time, there was no way I could ever see them without it because Mort waited for those and insisted on that and it was my greatest pleasure to do this so uh uh more and iris um more blessed memory and iris is with us today thank you for everything you've done and it wouldn't be we wouldn't have this pj library program in cleveland if it wasn't for the deborah and november pj library endowment fund that you established and we are so grateful Thanks. Yeah. all right so anyway um what we're going to do is we're going to get started now the hollow book I don't know what that is. Don't worry about it. Uh, the hollow book that uh, that Allie just read to us talked about all the things we did with our hands. We are going to do some things with our hands, but the way that I make hala um, and the way that I continue to do it, which is what I think because of the easy, ease of doing this, that I've been able to do it every week is I use my food processor because it takes next to no time at all. So, girls, you're going to help me. The first thing we're going to do. And Wait, you I have one quick question for you, Safta Hadi. Can one, can we use rapid rise yeast, like instant yeast instead? And what do we do if we don't have a food processor? Okay, so the recipe can be adapted with What's the same that? proportions. This is the yeast. Oh, here I want. Josie, I wanted you to put this in. Can you put that in? Okay, and this is the recipe. So um, I use, uh, uh, it's two packages of yeast or the equivalent of uh, four and a half hey, teaspoons. Okay, you'll do, you're gonna do the next part. Um, if you don't, you can use rapid rise yeast. I tend not to like rapid rise yeast, and this takes very little time anyway, uh, but you can. And the instant yeast, I, I, the only time I've used instant yeast has been with um, a sourdough, when I'm making sourdough bread. Sometimes it calls for that, usually not. Uh, so I, I don't use it in this, but there's nothing that says you can't. Okay, Josie, put the sugar piece in this bowl. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to be proofing the, um, proofing the yeast to make sure that it's going to bubble up. And most recipes you'll read will tell you, you know, take a teaspoon of uh, sugar and put it in. I like to do things in an expedient manner. And so, thank you, sweetie. I like to do things in an expedient manner. So I just put all the sugar in. And the recipe that I'm using, of course, says it needs a half a cup of sugar. Now, one second, I just have to get the water. It's got to be pretty hot or, well, lukewarm. <sighs> Okay. Ellie, will you pour the water in, please? Yep. Pour that all in. It's a cup of water. And we're going to... Very Whoa, good. Whoa, that looks like the mud in Canada. Like the mud in Canada. Okay. It's like in the... Josie, will you stir that lake. up a little bit? The mud in Canada. Yeah, in the lake where it was kind of a, a yellowish color mud, right? Only you wouldn't eat that mud, but just thank you. And Ellie, will you stir it a little bit? Okay, now, excellent. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside and it's going to get really bubbly and foamy. So I don't know if you can see, this is this is kind of liquidy it looks like, but within a couple of minutes while we put the other ingredients together, that's gonna bubble up. And then that makes us uh, know that our yeast is active and good and that the dough will rise. No, the, I like the way the yeast smells. All right, so here's my food processor. First thing I'm gonna do, is we're gonna put in um, the flour. And when I bake bread, any other kind of bread, I always go by the weight. I, I never use the um, unit measurements anymore because it's the weight of the flour. And uh, you might not aerate your 
your flower a lot, or some people have a bad habit where they put their flower in the cup and then they tap it down. You never want to do that. That adds more volume, adds more flour and more density, and you want to keep your flour as light as possible. So I tend to just um, put it in, like, you know, layering it in, and then I'm going to do uh, close to six cups. So, um, Ellie, will you put one cup in for me? Can you reach that? Just dump it in. Okay, good job. And then, Josie, will you put one in? What do we use if we don't have a food processor? So if you have a KitchenAid, you can use a KitchenAid. And if and then you have to let it go. Here, can you put this in, Josie? And then you can um, let it go for like six or seven minutes with a dough hook. Um, or you can do it by hand. You can do it by hand. You would not put, I'm going to do the rest of these so we can just go a little faster here. Um, you would not put, um, wait, three. I'm going to need someone to help me count so we don't put too much in. I did three. What's this one going to be, guys? Um, four. Four. What's this one going to be? Yeah, I know. That's five. okay. This is, and what comes after five, Josie? Six. Six. Okay. And that's how old Ellie is. So we'll put this in. All right. So I'm going to do this now. Uh, so when you're mixing dough by hand, you're going to start off with maybe three cups of the flour. It's and bubbling the liquid. up. See, I see it. It's bubbling up. We're going to show everybody else in a minute. It's bubbling up there. Wait, let me get my salt. Let me get my salt. Oh, yeah. It's bubbling up. That's, that's yeah, so it needs a teaspoon and a half of salt, which I measure in my hand because I know my palm size of hand of salt. But you can measure it out until you've been doing it for 40 years, and then we do that. Now we're going to aerate this for a minute. Josie, can you um can you push this button a couple times? Push it hard. One more time. Ellie, you can push it once or twice. Okay. Good. All right. That's it. Good. Now we're going to put in our eggs and oil. If you're doing this at home, I always like to do the oil first. And that way, whatever else goes in the cup with the oil, after they had the oil, will slide right out because the oil will grease the cup. So I'm going to pour my half cup of oil. And oil, this kind of oil doesn't have any kind of smell. This is just canola oil. I use canola oil or vegetable oil. And what I'm going to do is the recipe tells you to put a little bit of the oil in your bowl. So this is a, uh, one of the bowls that I use for my bread rose. This is actually a bread bowl and it's about 100 years old from um, Unising, Michigan, which is in the Upper Peninsula. And they were known for their bowls. So I'm just putting a little bit in here. And then I use can... bread flour or all purpose flour. So I always use bread flour. And unless I don't can have I it, already, please put the rest in there. Excellent. Excellent. Now we're going to do some eggs. I always use bread flour. I like the, the gluten content. The Just a second. You're going to crack the eggs. Okay. The bread flour has a much higher gluten content. And the more gluten that you have, gluten that you have, the uh, better shape, it'll hold the shape, it'll rise higher instead of spreading wider. And it just gives a better consistency all around. My favorite flour is the um, uh, King Arthur bread flour. Um, I have from time to time also used the King Arthur uh, red all-purpose flour, and that actually has a higher gluten content than regular all-purpose flour. And I always buy the unbleached. I just think it's a, it's a better product. All right, now we're going to do the egg cracking. I'll tell you, Ellie's been cracking eggs, I think, well, you probably started when you were about four, but at the age of six, I think you've become really good at cracking eggs. So we're going to put three eggs in. One more. Excellent. Josie, will you put that egg in, please? Okay. This one. I like to do mine one at a time. Yeah, put it in there. Great. Girls, you remember what I told you why we do one egg at a time? No. Well, because we want to be, I'm going to do one. I know, I want to do it. I'm going to let you do the other one. We do one egg at a time because we want to make sure that every egg is good. Every once in a great while. Um, Josie, you put this one in too? Mm -hmm. Every once in a great while, you might find an egg that has a little red spot on it or something. So not only is it probably not a good egg, it's also not a kosher egg. We want the egg to be really, really clean. Or if, it, if you've got a smelly egg, which doesn't happen very often, as I said. Okay, Jeff, Ellie, you ahead do that one. A little bit more. Oh, good job. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh. What is your secret to cracking eggs, Ellen? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Oh, uh, but I know that's your secret ingredient. It is a secret. Saba, 
Could yes. you give me a help for a second and get uh, uh, Ellie um, the cloth to clear her, her hands off? Yes. So now we have three eggs in here. Oh, wait, Joseph, you need to put the egg in. Hey, no, that's not fair. Why don't I get it? Because you have to crack them. Uh, you have to crack them. Things have to be fair. All right. Now, let's look at the yeast. What do you think? Okay. What do you think? Bubbled up. Bubbled up. You can see, the yeast got all foamy and bubbled up. But I do have one more secret ingredient. Can you hand me that secret ingredient in the big bottle there? And it's still, it's a child-friendly friendly recipe, even though we put brandy in this challah. It just adds, I'm not exactly sure what, but sort of this je ne sais quoi. Um, some, sometimes I think it helps to preserve the challah longer, except that the challah never lasts long if we preserve. But there's just this little thing for us. So I put the two tablespoons in with the yeast, the brandy. And now we are going to have the magic happen. And this is what Yay, takes magic. no time. Oh, yes, magic. So I'm going to put the top of my food processor. Can I not that yet, on? not yet, not yet. Take the top off. And after Ellie presses on, I'm now? going to start to pour now? this through. And then I'll talk now? to you about how you know in just a second. Okay, go ahead. Now, press the card. Let go. Pour it in here. Starts to come together in a ball. Yeah, and I see some yellow on the side. Oh, God. <laughs> that's so crazy. Hey, yeah. See how it's making a nice ball of dough? No, no. Oh, hold on. Then what happens is sometimes you need to put more flour in. Gets a little stuck. And and this is where this, not an exact science. Wait, no, 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 not yet. Not until I tell you to. Uh, because depending on the temperature of your oven, uh, the temperature of your room, the humidity outside, you, the same recipe may need more or less flour just because of uh, what's happening outside. So can you press that again now? Uh, press it hard. Hey, Joseph, press it. Okay, let go. Okay, wait, it's going to make it, it's going to circle around. See how the dough, the ball of dough is going round and round and round. And when it starts to pull away from the sides, we know that it's got enough flour. We're going to let it go for about a minute or so, as opposed to the 10 minutes or longer that you might be kneading the dough. Can you hear me talking over this? So what I wanted to share is that I, I would watch my mother make bread, which she didn't do that often, but when she did, it was a wonderful thing to see. And I said, Mom, how do you know how long to knead the dough? You're just kneading it, kneading it, kneading it. And her, her secret on how long to knead the dough was, you knead it until the ceiling sweats. I did not understand that for the life of me. The ceiling is never going to sweat. What do you mean the ceiling sweats? That was exactly the point. You can never knead the dough too much. Knead it and knead it and knead it. It will only get better. It's... Just don't worry about it. Keep needing it. When you think you've needed it enough, need it some more. So, I think I've probably needed this enough. So, let's see. Can you tell me how does this feel? Uh, it's it a little sticky. sticky. Tiny bit sticky. So Can wait, I just, try? No, no. Josie, take your hand out right now. Though. Okay, good. Okay, move your hands, Josie. Move Why your hands. I'm going to put like just a tablespoon out. I need flour on my hands. Yep, yeah, you need flour on your hands. You're going to get some. Ah! Hey, Josie, will you stop it? Josie, push this. Push this button. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is ready to be shaped. Oh, I look at that. Said. Much better. Yeah, much better. Okay. Because of the company. Yeah. Okay. Saba, can you help me a minute here? Yep. Hey, no, no, no. I thought we were going to help. You are, but you can't help with this part. You can take that away from here. Oh, yeah. And then you come back and take this. All right, so now we are going to just put this out and give it a quick little turn. Get the ball of dough out of here. No, no, no. Here, uh, don't touch the flour, flour yet. Okay, right now we are, this is not the flour for touching. This is the flour. So we take it out. This is when you use the food processor, of course, you have to be very careful because the blade is very sharp. I would never have a kid do this part because, um, you could hurt yourself. Okay, you guys need to keep your hands away from here for a minute, please. Okay, well, I like get this out. And if you don't have one of these handy dandy scrapers or bench scrapers, you should get them. I think they're incredibly helpful. We use them for all kinds of baking. Yeah, I got hey, when did we use your 
Guys, when did we use this recently? What did we make? Uh, were we making? Yeah, don't you whisper. Say it out loud. What did we make? Yeah. What kinds of things do you like to bake? What are the things that we do together? Uh, we make Hanukkah cookies. What else do we make? And you said uh, Hanukkah. Yeah, I said Hanukkah. Great. Right. Hala. Have they, you know, I like to bake with you guys because it makes traditions, right? Yeah, every week you bake with us. Every week. And do you like that? Yeah. yeah. And do you especially like eating the things we bake every week? Yeah. What are your favorite things to eat? Hamatash. Um, you like Hamatash. What was your favorite flavor of Hamatash? Ooh. Mine was chocolate. Yeah, well, you like chocolate a lot. You like chocolate a lot. Yeah, okay. how can Josie need resist poppy food? Oh. Mine also, my favorite flavor was actually also chocolate. Was it actually also chocolate? Because I remember the day when you didn't like chocolate, but I'm glad to hear you like chocolate. Oh, I only don't like chocolate chips. Oh, you only like chocolate chips. Okay, okay. I don't like chocolate chips. So now I'm just going to gather this okay. into a little ball. Well, and I don't have to knead it at all, but I'm just going to do it together until... It's, okay, stop that. Can I sit down now? You're doing the most now. Well, you're going to, you can go sit down for a second, but you're going to need to okay, help me in a minute. I'm having the right. flour. Now I've just pushed the, the oil around the bowl, put the dough inside, oil ah, the top one, that sorry. And I have a special thing I put on top of this bowl. Oh, that's in shame. I have a special cloth that I use. Is that it's got the, the bracha around us for making challah. And um, my wow. sister gave me this a long time ago. Thank you, Marlene. And now this is gonna go rise. And while this rises, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about what uh, the influences were for me for baking. And uh, Aaron is gonna put up some pictures and we're gonna just talk, talk about that for about three minutes and then the dough will have risen, you'll see. So I started baking, or I started doing all this because of our mom, Marlene and I. In this picture here on the left, you see uh, it was like maybe my seventh birthday, and Mom had made this beautiful butterfly cake. That's a cake that a few years later she entered into the Illinois State Fair, and it won a blue ribbon, of course. And her cakes were even more delicious than they looked. And then I was in plays in high school, and Mom made hundreds and thousands of, or not, yes, yes, thousands of all kinds of special occasion cakes. But everyone knew that the cast party after a play would have um, a pearl poofless cake. And I was in a play called Harvey about a six foot long invisible rabbit and came up with the idea of doing it. And it was thought it was a joke at first. And my father said, no, we can do it. And my mother couldn't believe it and ended up having the six foot long rabbit cake. It was fantastic. Next. So there've been a lot of cakes in our family because baking is a tradition. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, that's my wedding cake. That's only part of it. You're not seeing the bottom part with all the other tiers. But that's, that's our mom on the right, and Michael and I. And the bottom wedding cake, that's Marlene, my sister's wedding cake. Had a fountain and all kinds of fun things uh, and with that one. Upper right-hand corner is our oldest son, Natan's bar mitzvah cake. That was, what, 32? Oh, no, 22 yeah, years ago. Yep, and this is their father. And then our middle son, Ari, that was his bar mitzvah cake uh, many years ago. Okay, next. Uh, on the bottom, where you see two hollows and candlesticks, those are hollows that my mom made. And they were just beautiful. And as I said, these are things that she toiled over. They took a long time, but they were just amazing. And they always beautiful. inspired me. So in the upper left-hand corner, you see uh, um, my parents and my mother-in-law in pink. And then behind that, those are Kate's grandparents, uh, her father's oh, parents. That's Nan, that. that's Nana and, pa and, and your grandpa. And those two hollows are what I call wedding ring hollows, and I made those for Natana Kate's wedding. Natana Kate's wedding. And then on the right hand side, in the upper right hand corner, this is a, an apple challah that I like to make either for Rosh Hashanah or Sukkot. And we had it this year at Sukkot, it was a lot of fun. And then one of the ones I'm going to demonstrate for you on how to braid is in the bottom right hand corner, and that's a round hollow that I braid with four. Um, we like to do those for the holidays, no, you particular. Made it with six. No, this one I do with four. And that in particular, uh, since I'm, we do have a holiday coming up, three weeks from today is the first day of Pesach, but we're not making challah for Pesach, obviously. But the holiday right after that is going to be Shavuot. So you're going to see how I, I'll, I will be doing my Shavuot challah. Okay, next. Oh, that may be the end. Is that the end? Oh, well, as I said, we have all these traditions now. We do things with the grandkids because that is what, for me, baking is all about today. So I make a special birthday cake every year. 
Ellie, do you remember what that one is up in the upper uh, left corner? Wasn't it the Bell one? That was Bell. And then last, the, her last birthday cake this year was a unicorn. Yeah, that was me. That was you. And then um, Ellie and Josie uh, have a favorite thing they love to do when we bake. This is not baking challah. This was baking some cookies. And we were licking the bowl and licking the spoon. Which you like better, the bowl or the spoon? Um, the bowl. The bowl. You like bowl? Oh, oh you got it. I and need, I need that, uh, you spoon, like spoon. Right. And then the bottom spoon. two pictures are just uh, some pictures over, you know, the last, uh, whatever, Josie from probably a year or so ago with a little holla she made. And then the two hollas that they're holding in the right are ones that they braided themselves. And can you guys tell us what's in your hollas? Josie, what's in your holla? Why can't I? Because you're Josie, what's in your holla that you baked over there? What did you put inside of it? Joe's Ellie, what did you put inside yours? Um, chocolate chips, a jelly belly, and sprinkles. Yep. All right. What did I so now put inside? We're, you did you did craisins and raisins? All right. Raisins and craisins and jelly belly. Yes, you can be sprinkles. as creative as you want. The jelly bellies here, don't don't shake the table, honey, okay? The the jelly bellies are a very interesting addition. Probably not for everybody, but my oh, I wanted to point out, we were wearing two very special um, articles of clothing here. PJ Library aprons, right? Got to do it. And then I hope you noticed my lovely Hala earrings. Our youngest son, Ben's girlfriend, Sydney, gave these to me a few weeks ago. And yes. I love them. So yes, they're very appropriate for today. Now, through the magic of TV, we have... Okay. Hala dough that is already risen. See how it got all doubled and stuff? Now, I think one of the girls, if the things the girls love to do. How long do you let it rise, just so we no, know? I let it rise. Time to get down. Yeah, just a second. At least hour, hour and a half. It, once again, it depends on the temperature of your kitchen, what's going on outside. Um, I have a proofing setting on my oven. And so from time to time, if I need it to rise a little bit faster, I'll do it in the proofing setting. What I also frequently do, and especially when I was still working full time, I would often make the dough Thursday night, put it in a giant plastic bag, just after I take it off the fruit, out of the fruit processor, put it in the refrigerator and it rises overnight. And then the next day, about an hour before I'm gonna shape it, take it out of the fridge and then it comes to room temperature and then I go do the shaping. That works out just fine. Okay, go ahead punch. You punch and then Josie punches. Wow, you girls are strong. Oh, yeah. Okay, now Josie's turn. And you punch the dough to get the air out of it. You want, when you're when you're making your bread, you don't want it to have holes inside unless you're doing sourdough bread or something that has holes in it. But this we want to have just a smooth, consistent uh, texture all the way. Okay, okay, excellent. <laughs> Josie, yeah, I know, you love that. Okay, we're going to get to punch some more, too. So now I'm going to put it back on my board. We're going to turn it out and... Okay, now, <laughs> the flour. Comes out of the bowl really easily. Ooh. And I'm going to divide this up. So normally, I can make one really big challah that if it's, if it's, if you have a group of, let's say, 14 people or 15 people, um, the one giant challah is good if they don't each eat half a challah. Uh, but uh, if you, and, and then you can also do, if you cut it in half, you'd have two challahs that would each serve, let's say, six to eight people. Um, but I'm going to divide this up a little differently today because I want to give Ellie and Josie a good chunk that they can work with because they're going to shape some stuff first. And um, I want to do the braided one. Okay, Josie, will you do the spiral one? I'll do the spiral. Okay, you guys do the spiral. So the first thing we're no, 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 there's no better on that. Oh, okay. wait a minute. Before you roll it in the shape, gotta, what do we have to do? We want to put the fillings in. So we want to flatten the dough out. When you're putting in raisins or something, that would be a most typical thing that most people will do. You may not want to put the jelly bellies in first. Um, but raisins, chocolate chips, whatever additive you're going to do, you don't do it when you're putting it in the food processor. You do it after it's risen. Um, and, and then you incorporate it into the dough. And it's going to make the dough, it just automatically changes the texture. It's kind of interesting. It gets a little harder to work with. But no, okay. you, you need it in here first before you shape it up. So... Let's do, you guys wanted to both put raisins? Yes, raisins mm -hmm. and raisins. Okay, here are some raisins. Here, Josie, go ahead and put your raisins in. And I don't want to. Okay, you want some raisins too? Yeah. Okay, and just kind of dot them all over. And then Josie, you want to put can raisins? I eat one? You can eat one. Yes. 
Last. You're gonna eat the last one. Okay, there's your crazy. I already. Know. And Ellie, you said you wanted some chocolate chips. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna eat one of those also. Oh my goodness! How are there gonna be enough left if you eat all the chocolate chips? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna eat all of them. Okay, here's a few chocolate chips, and you don't want chocolate chips, right, Josie? Yes. I don't like chocolate. Oh, uh, well, you know what? The white chocolate chips, because we're gonna have this for a, a meat I'm meal. Very very scary. Oh, okay. Guess what? <laughs> Last time I chocolate chips melted when they were when they were in the oven. Okay, and you can eat. You have three Jelly Bellies to put in. Yay! Which means I can eat one of them. No, here I'll give you an extra one to eat. Okay. Right. Give me an extra one to eat. You can have an extra one to eat too. All right. So they got That's all their one. special additives. Now I know that they both want sprinkles on top. We have some, you know, coarse sugar, colored sugar sprinkles. When we get time Done. to um. To bake the challah, we'll brush it with egg, which we would do in any case because it makes it beautiful and shiny. And um, and then you would sprinkle on anything on top because otherwise it wouldn't stick. The adults like um, either on nothing. You could put poppy seeds, sesame seeds, or uh, lately I've done um, the uh, everything yeah. but the bagel spice. Don't do really the don't do the sesame seeds. I, I know, I know, you don't like the sesame seeds. Okay. okay, now Ellie's gonna roll this up, mm-hmm. get all things in, and now you're gonna just squeeze it together a little bit more, and you're gonna do the. Roll it all the way together so you really got it hard. Remember how we talked about it? you want to put more force on it than that? Right. You want the dough to move. Okay, so now here, I'm gonna let me let me separate this into three pieces for That's you. Because you are gonna make three strand braid. Wait, wait, let me put a little bit more here. Okay. And when you're rolling the dough, I like to start with one hand with my palm and get it flat so you get kind of a nice even thing and um you want to make sure that it rolls and that you're not pushing down and flattening it but you're doing it firm enough so that it can continue to lengthen and you can move out with your hands okay good enough you can press it just a little bit harder and keep rolling it a little bit more because the more you roll it okay remember go out with your hands make it longer oh you're doing such a good job excellent okay why don't you do the last one now is that good enough it's excellent okay that's the same length as the one that i just did Right, press down a little harder as you roll. Not flattening it. Yes, That's exactly. Like I'm going to help you in a second. Why don't you roll that together now, Josie? I don't know. Yeah, you do it like this it way. Like okay, and keep going. Excellent. Now let's just squeeze it so that all the stuff stays inside. Okay, Ellie, now do two hands now. So after, because we're not coming to your house, to your house this Friday, could we take these? You're going to take those home with you. Yay. Right. right. Yeah. We're going to be out of town for the first time of the year this week, so. <laughs> All right. Oh, Ellie, that's excellent. Okay, Josie, look what a good job you did already, Josie. Wow, well, Josie, that's cute. Okay, now wait one second, Josie. Let's get Ellie's braided thing going. Like, yeah, okay. I know how to braid myself, though. Okay, good. Don't be so... First, first you're going to yeah, pinch the ends together. Yep, do that one like that, right? Now, remember, it goes into the middle. Look how big yeah. one. And then that one goes over in the middle. No, look at mine. Okay, good. And then this one, right? And then that one. Wow! Excellent. Look at wow. that. Wow! Perfect little braid. Look at that. Wow! That's amazing. You guys are doing an incredible job. No, see what happened. Mine, Sava. Mine, Sava. Sava, look at mine. No, Excellent. Wait, wait. Can I just show you one thing, Ellie? Josie, come here. We're just gonna make it a little whatever here. Okay. Now, can you um? Okay, can you do the spiral now. Show us how you do a spiral hollow. And this is something that I do with a bigger amount of dough oftentimes when I'm doing uh, for the, the Hakeem. So I could do that for Shavuot too. Look uh, at that. Shav- wow. Whoa, Jojo. Okay, so hold your hand down again so people can see. It's a really pretty. I love spot. it. Isn't that great? When I'm ready to bake, when I put it down now, I didn't do this yet, but I spray my pan with Pam and then I sprinkle on cornmeal. And the cornmeal makes a nice little crust on the bottom, and it also helps keep your dough from sticking. Okay, now I'm going to, Ollie, will you go sit over there a minute? Because I'm going to show okay. everybody how I'm going to make, um, let's see, do we have time? I've got time to show you two different kinds of braids. <clears throat> yeah, I like the six braid and the four braid. Well, I don't think I'm going to do a six braid. I'm going to do a four braid, and I'm going to do a four braid round. Because I was talking about shavuot that's coming up. Oh. So, I'm going to take this piece of dough. Oh, and because it's going to be a, a round hollow for Shavuot, I'm going to put my raisins in also. Scatter them all around. Scatter, scatter. Scatter, scatter. 
And we're just gonna fold it over a little bit more and put it down. No, I'm not gonna take these to Florida. You can keep these. You'll have them next next okay. Shabbos. I'm looking at your mom and dad. I'm doing it so fast, Santa. Well, I am doing it. Is that gonna be our mom and dad? No, I think we're gonna maybe we'll even save this one for, for Chevrolet. We'll see. Wait, that's not gonna be your mom and dad. I think the other one that's that gonna be your mom and dad, because your mom and dad died, remember? No, 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 your mom and dad, not my mom and dad. Yeah, my mom and dad, they're not around anymore, but they're around. We think of them all the time, and they they know that we're here. Ellie, can you move back? Okay, so now I'm going to roll these out. Actually, you want to help me, Ellie? Roll this one out a little Where bit. Where can I put your mom and dad? What? Can I put your mom and dad? You, you, well, you can't go to my mom and dad. My mom and dad are in heaven. Yeah, your great grandma and grandpa, and you know both names for them. All right, so that's exactly. Did I answer the other question that you were asking me before? I, I was a little scattered. Yep. Yeah. Allie, you Wait, well, I couldn't. Can you? Uh, I don't know if your volume went a little quieter for some reason. Are you able to hear me? You now I can. Okay. What was your question? I, would, I was wondering if, um, if, there were, if there were any questions or if you had other ones or if I answered the other things before. Not right now. Um, does anyone else have it? I think we answered them. There was one question you mentioned you don't like the taste of the instant yeast. Is it is there a specific reason? Like is there what's the difference with the yeast again or like the you don't the taste of it? Um, instant yeast is one that um I know a lot of people are using now. You don't have to proof it ahead of time, you just put it in with your with your dry ingredients. Um, and I just haven't done a lot with it, and I, I, I like the yeast I've been using, so I, I use the instant, the uh, after dry yeast. I did use uh, early on in the pandemic because uh, I had bought some to try. I used um, you're folks if you're all done because now I gotta do this part. I used um, some um, fresh yeast. I've never used that before. I really like the results of that as well. So that's uh, that's something you can do. But I just use the actor, the regular actor. No, 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 can you guys just be quiet a little bit right now and now Elena and Atticus, because now I'm going to show everybody how I braid a round braid with four long strands. So I've got these four strands here. I'm going to make like a tick, tick, tick work, okay, with about and maybe about an inch gap in between. Michael, can you tilt this down so that uh, people can see what I'm doing here? Hang on a second. We'll lose the heads, but we'll have the board. Okay, so I've got the four strands of dough with a little bit of a gap here and the nice thing about when you're working with dough of course you can keep stretching it and moving it around now i'm going to just do an alternate thing so one goes underneath there and then this one goes underneath here so it's like you're forming a lattice like a basket here and go back a second now i'm going to start on any one of the sides here with a part with this it's underneath so you can see this one here this is underneath the one on top of it and i'm going to go around so I'm go, or go this way, down, 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 and down. And that takes me around four. Then I'm gonna reverse it. One, two, three, four. And then I've got the other one again. Then I reverse it again. One, two, three, four. And then I can do it one more time and I'll just tuck those ends in. And then when it bakes, it'll stay underneath and then you have the shape and then you can just put it on a pan on a, on a cookie sheet or I put I usually put it in this one I would put in an eight inch round cake pan it'll keep its shape and it'll become that that ball of dough that you saw a holly you saw before I'm gonna set this aside these are gonna rise again I'm gonna cover them up they're gonna rise for about 30 to 45 minutes at the 30 minute mark no not with this I'm gonna do this pretty fast now at the 30 minute mark I'm gonna uh, heat up my oven if I'm doing this size how I'll do it at uh, 350 degrees and uh, once again what I do may not necessarily be what you're going to be doing in your kitchen because your ovens may be calibrated differently everybody's has a different uh, a different uh, way that it works because nothing is ever perfect and machines change so now I'm going to do a four braided a long four braided one there's several different four braided ones that you can do i do two different four braids um this is one i've been doing lately that i like a lot and it resembles my six braid but um 
it's just with four instead. And at any point, if, if anybody is looking for some resources, just contact me. I'll be happy to, to share with you or go on the web because there are so many amazing resources on the web on how to braid, how to make fantastical shapes. My sister Marlene uh, has, has done different kinds of uh, halas. She likes to do halas in the, um, uh, for, for birthdays and the number of the birthday. And, and I, I, I'm not as creative as she is. So I crisscrossed the top ones and then I'm going to bring the top one down and I'm going to just keep crisscrossing and bringing one over like that and keep going like this. And it's easier to show than to talk about. Sometimes if I talk about it too much, I lose my place and I can't remember what braid I used. So that became that. And then that's going to go on a cookie sheet. Also a with a, sheet. well, like a cookie sheet here. I, I, I'm putting these all in one right now just for the, the ease of it. Michael, can you tilt this back up again? Yep. That's very impressive. Oh, thank you. I mean, you make it look so fast and easy. I'm watching and I'm going, wow. <laughs> well, you know what? When you do something for as many times as I've done it, it becomes fast and easy, right? You guys know that, right? Things mm -hmm. become fast and easy for like you. Like I too. started braiding so fast. You started braiding so fast and you even do that with your own hair sometimes. Really? Uh, no, I don't. Well, I do it for your hair sometimes. What I'd love to just encourage you all to do if you haven't done it before is to start baking. And especially if you've got children or your grandchildren or, or whoever around, there's nothing like the smell of the fresh baked bread when you come in. It smells like Shabbat. It becomes a tradition that you can pass on from one generation to the other. Uh, every one of uh, my sons learned how to make challah. Uh, one of them has, has done it actually a few times. Uh, yeah, your dad has it, but your Uncle Ben has made it a number of times. And then my daughters-in-law uh, have made challah and, and done that. And uh, Ben's significant other also makes challah in Sydney. So we love that. And now the girls are making challah and I'm looking forward to the day when Mark will make challah with me. I'm guessing probably by next year, uh, but he, he does like to watch the food processor go round and round because he's been here when we made dough. But for us, our family traditions have always revolved around the food that's at the table, the holidays that are, are upon us and what can we do to make them special and what can we do to build our lasting memories in them. Uh, my, my sister and I would always joke that every pe everybody else that we knew had family albums of people. We had family albums of cakes because these are the things that my parents took pictures of. Many times we were in those pictures with the cakes and, and that's one of the ways that we've preserved our memories that are very special to our family. So we like taking pictures of the girls with their birthday cakes and they're baking and helping me and doing all that. Yep, all of you guys. Can you stop sticking And um, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That, that welcome. was so painful and amazing. And ladies, Ellie and Josie, thank you. You guys were um, wonderful helpers. Thank you so much. And you were so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So thanks, PJ Library, friends and family. Bye. We, Bye. we really appreciate you being here. And a special thanks to Safta, Huddy, and Ellie and Josie. That was an amazing demonstration. Um, if anyone has any PJ Library questions or Howler questions, feel free to email us or let us know. We do have a couple upcoming PJ events for families. Our next uh, PJ event is going to be on March 21st, a family yoga. So get up and get moving. After you eat all that challah, then you need to do some yoga <laughs> to um, be healthy. And then we also have a weekly wellness series for parents um, at noon. So lunchtime chat with um, a social worker to help parents through this crazy time. And that will be, I believe, on March 24th. Um, but just email us or check or let us know. And again, thank you. Thank you, Aaron, for your help and sharing the pictures and everything. So.